in this experiment number 5 mechanical vibration our objective is to determine the moment of inertia of a body about an axis passing through its center of gravity by using bifilar suspension so this is our bifilar suspension apparatus test and this is a bifilar suspension rod and uh, and if we want to calculate the moment of inertia of any object then we will place this object on the axis which is passing through the center of gravity of this rod and uh, the object center of gravity and this rod center of gravity will match with each other and we can find the moment of inertia of that particular object uh, by this using uh, this uh, bifilar suspension equipment so first we discuss little bit theory related to this experiment as you know that the term moment of inertia is used very frequently in mechanical design calculations so there are two different types of moment of inertia one is the mass moment of inertia and the second one is the area moment of inertia some students find this concept very abstract and difficult to understand by introdu introducing them together i hope it will help you to understand these concepts that what is the mass moment of inertia and what is the area moment of inertia but before that i wanted to pause for a moment and think what does the word inertia mean and in what capacity we already know about inertia think about it what physical quantity comes to our mind the answer is the inertia is the resistance of an object to change in its state of motion and the physical quantity that you are already familiar with is mass that what then what caused motion we know that force causes translational motion while movement causes rotational motion according to newton's second law force equals to mass time linear acceleration and or it can be written this way that the acceleration a is caused by force f and is equal to f divided by mass of the object m as you can see here mass is the resistance of translational motion and that's why sometime mass is also called inertia mass and since movement causes rotation so we can write something similar and relate movement to the rotational motion of an object indeed we can similar to newton's second law movements equal to i times angular acceleration alpha as you can see movement and angular accelerations are both vectors and they have the same direction again we can rewrite this equation into this form and if you can compare it to the equations above we can tell that this term i m is resistant to rotation and it is known as mass moment of inertia note that i put the subscript m here because i want to also discuss the area moment of inertia in this same video and i want you to be able to distinguish between them but often time you will see it without the subscript m how is it if we define just like a movement caused by a force the moment of inertia always calculated about an axis say axis a a dash on the rigid body for an arbitrary differential element with the mass dm we can find the perpendicular distance between it and the axis r and the mass moment of inertia about this particular axis a a is integration of r square time dm integrated throughout the entire body so unlike mass which is absolute mass moment of inertia is relevant 
and is different when calculated about the different axes. Needless to say, in this movement equation, these two must be calculated about the same axis. So that's the mass moment of inertia. What about the area moment of inertia? We know that for an object with certain mass m, if it has uniform density rho, then mass equals to rho times the volume and we can use a volume to represent the object and if the volume has one uniform dimension say uniform height h then v then v is at times the cross sectional area a and we can use the area to represent the object the area can be considered as a geometric reduction of the object similarly if the object has the mass moment of inertia calculate it about a specified axis because dm equals to density rho times differential volume dv because dm equals to the density rho times differential volume dv then this this can be written as constant rho times integration of r square into dv throughout the volume of the object and again for constant height h we can pull this constant outside the integration sign and guess get this which is the area moment of inertia so mass can be reduced to a 2d geometric representation of the area and similarly mass moment of inertia can be reduced to a 2d geometric representation the area moment of inertia in we will see the uh, how to calculate area moment of inertia uh, in couple of next couple of slides but before that i want to remind you that uh, lots of concepts are easier to understand if you consider them as a counterparts the first row of this table deals with the translational motion and second row deals with the rotational motion for the driving force we have force versus moment of inertia we have force versus moment of the force for displacement we have linear displacement versus angular displacement theta which is an angle for velocity we have linear velocity v versus angular velocity omega for acceleration we have linear acceleration a versus angular acceleration alpha for inertia or resistance to motion we have mass m versus mass moment of inertia i m and lastly for the 2d geometric reduction of inertia we have area a versus area moment of inertia i a hopefully this table help you better understand the concept of moment of inertia so mass moment of inertia is the resistance against the rotational speed of a rotating body it is represented by the symbol i unit of mass moment of inertia in si system is kilogram meter square whereas area moment of inertia is the indication of rigidity area moment of inertia has a si unit of meter uh, to raise the power of 4 or millimeter to raise the power of 4 Area moment of inertia is not a unique property of a cross section. It quantifies the resistance to bending about a particular axis. And so, its values changing depending upon where we place the reference axis. We can approximate the area moment of inertia of a cross section by splitting it into small elements. Each element contribute to the total area moment of inertia by a quantity equal to its differential area dA multiplied by y square where y is the distance to the reference axis which is the x-axis 
in this case we can uh, sum up to all the values of small elements to obtain the area moment of inertia if y axis is our reference axis we can calculate i y in the same way area moment of inertia has a unit of millimeter to the uh, raised to power 4 because of the square term it is always a positive quantity so most of the students uh, get confused uh, due to the representation of area moment of inertia with the i capital i and uh, with the representation of the mass moment of inertia with the capital i and they both having the same integral but the difference is that uh, this is the differential of the area and uh, second one is the differential uh, mass and uh, both have the uh, both have uh, different uh, units as well and uh, different physical explanation so area moment of inertia is further classified in two ways one is the polar second moment of area and so second one is the planar second moment of area so for the case of the planar second moment of area uh, we have a two dimensional area and for the polar second moment of area we have a three dimensional area and for the three dimensional area we can calculate the third area moment of inertia for reference axis that is perpendicular to the plane of cross section this quantity is called the polar moment of inertia and it is usually denoted by the letter j so for the case of the polar moment of inertia we have this differential area in 3d plane and we instead of uh, uh, getting uh, perpendicular distance of this differential area with the x axis or y uh, x or y uh, axis we will uh, use uh, a row as a distance of this differential area from the reference axis so polar moment of inertia is uh, represented by j and uh, instead of using x or y square now we have a row square time the differential area and this row square is basically the addition of the x square plus y square so uh, with from the perpendicular axis theorem it is proved that the polar moment of inertia is equal to the area moment of inertia about the x axis plus area moment of inertia about the y axis we can also write this j as a capital I and subscript Z as moment of inertia in the Z direction if we have an arbitrary body then we can use radius of gyration radius of gyration represents the theoretical distance how which we can condense the entire area of the cross section into a narrow strip to get the same moment of inertia as the original cross section radius of gyration can be represented by with the r or k symbol the body of mass m whose moment of inertia is required is suspended by two parallel cords of length L at a distance d apart so this is the length L and this is the distance d between two cords so in this case we uh, our body is a uh, rod so if we uh, twist this rod if we displace this uh, rod by a small amount uh, theta then we can find the moment of inertia of this rod the tension in uh, either cord of, of the cable is equal to the mg upon 2 so here we have two types of displacement one is the theta displacement and another displacement is in the vertical plane which is phi which is produced at the supports first of all we will draw the free body diagram of uh, the small angular displacement which a body acquires body AB acquires after getting small twist okay so this small displacement is for the body AB it's it's in theta and for the string it is uh, equal to the phi A or phi B suppose first of all we suppose that the body is in the rest and it is, it is at uh, that position at point A and point B 
so uh, we will calculate the moment produced by uh, the body at point A and point B so it will be equal to so the moment of the body about point B is equal to the that amount which is tension A which is the that force times the distance from point B which is equal to the X plus Y in this case here and uh, here we have uh, this movement is uh, a clockwise movement and uh, another uh, movement the force Mg produces counterclockwise movement at point B and the perpendicular distance of Mg to the point B is Y so the tension in the string is equal to the Ta is equal to the Mg times Y upon X plus Y if we take the movement at point B and if we take the movement at point A then uh, uh, we can find the tension uh, in the string B which is equal to the Mg times X upon X plus Y now we are going to uh, rotate this body from this uh, a stationary position equilibrium position AB to the position new position of the body which is uh, A prime and B prime so if we talk about the angular display, displacement uh, A A dash which is basically equal to the suppose this is equal to the S this is the angular displacement S then we can find it uh, by r time s is equal to the r times theta so here we have taken the uh, small angle approximation so we are assuming that this uh, s is a straight line meaning this curved path is a straight line for the very small angles so by doing that we can write the, that the sine theta is equal to uh, theta or cos theta is equal to theta if we want to find the angular displacement a a prime or b b prime so we, we can use this relation as uh, phi a times l or we can write uh, it as x times theta these both are equal relations and uh, we can find the value of phi a and phi b from the uh, from this relation if we look at this figure at the stationary position we have a tension t here but when we uh, displace it uh, at a distance a a prime then here at that point we have uh, uh, two components of tension uh, the component of tension in the horizontal direction is that component this component of tension is uh, resp uh, responsible for uh, producing a uh, restoring torque so as these uh, both uh, components of uh, forces are equal and opposite in direction so they are producing uh, restoring uh, torque at that point so in order to cal uh, calculate the restoring torque so restoring torque uh, produced by these uh, both components of tension uh, tension in the string A and tension in the string B is equal to the uh, that amount and uh, as we know that the torque is equal to the force into the perpendicular distance which is equal to the X similarly for the uh, tension uh, component of tension force uh, B so this is our uh, restoring torque which is equal to the mg x y uh, theta upon l and uh, now we talk about the disturbing torque so disturbing torque is equal to the angular accelerations time uh, inertia product of uh, angular acceleration and the moment of inertia so we can write the disturbing torque is equal to the i times alpha and uh, i is equal to the uh, m k square as we know that uh, we can uh, write the moment of inertia in this form as well i is equal to m k square uh, as where m is the mass of the body and k is the radius of gyration and uh, radius of gyration is basically uh, the radius the theoretical distance at which we can condense the entire area of the cross section into a narrow strip to get the same moment of inertia as the original cross section has so if there is no damping then uh, destroying torque is equal to the disturbing torque so we can equate these both equations and from there uh, we can uh, write uh, this equation in terms of theta upon alpha 
which is equal to the uh, radius of gyration square times alpha upon g times x times y. We write it in this form of theta upon alpha because uh, we know that the time period is equal to the uh, 2 pi uh, un under root angular displacement upon angular acceleration. So here we can write this expression in terms of time period uh, as we know the value of the theta upon uh, alpha. We can also drive for the uh, frequency of the oscillation as we know the time period and frequency is the reciprocal of the time period. So we can drive the formula for the frequency as well from this relation. So from the first uh, free body diagram we find the uh, restoring uh, torque which is equal to the mg phi upon 2 as we have a distance uh, x plus y is equal to the d and from this restoring force the restoring couple will be equal to the that amount mg t square upon 4l we know that we can write the restoring force in both uh, forms uh, as mg phi upon 2 or mg d times theta upon 4l so when we put the uh, disturbing torque equal to the restoring force we will get the that relation and then from the above uh, when we put the values of i is equal to the mk square uh, then we will get the time period of oscillation so in order to find the moment of uh, inertia of uh, different uh, masses first we need to find the moment of inertia of uh, unloaded beam first so in order to find the moment of inertia of this rod what we need to know we need to know the mass and we need to know the radius of gyration and in order to find the radius of gyration we need to know the time period of the oscillation we need to know the distance between the two strings and uh, we need the length uh, of the string so first of all we will uh, calculate the moment of inertia of the unloaded uh, beam so so the mass of the unloaded beam is 1.39 kg what other parameters we have required in order to find the radius of gyration is the length of the string so we can uh, mirror the length of the string with the help of the inch tape we can mirror the distance between two strings as well and uh, at that uh, first stage we, we do not have a loaded loaded beam so b is equal to zero for the first case the other parameters required is the time period of the oscillation so we will mirror the time period of the 20 oscillations or 10 oscillations first and then we will convert uh, divide it by it by the 20 or the 10 in order to get the time period of a single oscillation. Before starting the experiment a small displacement is given to the beam and then gently release to begin oscillations uh, in order to account for the inertial effect. The time period for 20 oscillation is then mirrored from which the time period t is subsequently determined. So when we get all the values the time period of one single oscillation we calculate the, the distance between the two strings we, we calculated the length of the string then we can uh, find the moment of inertia of that particular beam using this relation we can also uh, find the time periods mass the distance the, the length which is the theoretical time period and then putting this theoretical time period in this relation we will get the inertia and from that inertia we can find the value of the theoretical radius of gyration which is equal to the 0.157 meters so our uh, value uh, should be of the radius of gyration uh, should be near to that particular value which is a theoretical value so let's start with the calculations for the for the first case here we have a length of the 0 0.450 meters and uh, the oscillations the time period of the single oscillation is 0.911 so from that uh, value we will find the radius of gyration which is equal to the 0.163 meters so here are the steps for finding the radius of gyration as k is equal to the time period times d upon 
फोर पाए अंडर वुड जी जी अपॉन एल सो रेडियस ऑफ जायरेशन फॉर द फर्स्ट केस इज इक्वल टू द पॉइंट वन सिक्स थ्री एंड स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ द रेडियस ऑफ जायरेशन इज इक्वल टू द जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू सेवन एंड वैन विल पुट दिस वैल्यू ऑफ रेडियो ऑफ जायरेशन इन टू द दिस इक्वेशन वी विल फाइंड द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया विच इज द मास मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्शिया ऑफ द बीम and for the uh, second uh, case which will we will pack the beam with the two masses two masses of 1.5 1.85 kg each these masses are b distance apart so the distance, the value of b in this case is 0.355 so after packing masses on the beam the radius of gyration will be equal to the point 152 as the uh, time period is changed now so radius of uh, value of radius of gyration is also changed so now by increasing the mass on the beam by adding 1.85 plus 1.85 which is the mass of the two uh, which is the weight of the two masses Uh, and uh, adding the mass of the beam itself which is equal to the 1.39 the whole mass will be equal to the 5.09 and uh, moment of inertia is increased now repeating these calculations for different lengths and uh, different position of the masses so it is concluded from this experiment that uh, moment of inertia of an object can be can change can be changed by changing the length of the string or uh, changing the position of the masses it means that it depends upon the location of the masses and the it depends upon the length of the string